you know, I've, I've had more fun than anybody else in the sport. I have met more people. I've traveled. I've seen more of the country, more of the world than I ever would have if I hadn't been involved in drag racing. So it's just, it's been phenomenal. Like any racer, I think we all look back and think we could have been more successful as far as winning races. Could have I changed and decided to become a professional racer in the same era of the John Force, Don Perdome type of people instead of continuing to do it as a hobby and teach school? Yeah. Would have I probably won more races? Yeah. Probably would have I made money? Probably yes. Uh, would have I had any more fun? Not a chance. Many cars first originated about 1965, and they were funny looking cars, and this is the reason the name got tagged on them. Needless to say, a car like this, there's really nothing funny about it. You know, I got to do a couple things that I love doing. I love teaching school and I love racing, so uh, it was hard to quit. There had to be minimum, what, 400 Nitro Funny cars in the country? and a couple of guys with a half decent job and a little bit of talent could actually go out and build something and be able to race at their, at least their local racetrack, if not travel. I was very, very fortunate to grow up here. Uh, we had three major racetracks within 40 minutes of the house. You know, Lyons was 20 minutes away, Irwindale was 35 minutes away, and Orange County was 45 minutes away. And when I first started, we still had San Fernando and uh, Fontana and, and Santa Ana. And so in kind of a panic, they didn't know what to do, so they tried to go back to Gene Beaver and say, can you take the LA Hooker back next year? And Gene says, no, but I got this. My nephew would sure like to go, and she was, he's really good, and, and all this other sort of stuff. And this is, I didn't know this story when I went. But, you know, that's how John Force got his first car. And Gene Beaver told John Force that she was, they won't know any better, you'll be a hero. Doesn't matter, you haven't driven it, haven't got a clue what's going on, but you can go over there and trick those silly Aussies and, you know, make a fortune. So I start my car up, do a burnout, back up, yaddy yaddy. John's turn, he goes to roll through the water, tires get dry, hits the gas, they go, uh, uh, well, uh. So he backs it back up, puts it in the water, and I mean, this is a burnout the Jungle Jim would have been proud of, I guarantee it, it was spectacular. Trouble is, about 300 feet down the racetrack, all this fire's rolling out from underneath the car, and he throws all the rods out of it. That's when I found out that nobody there knew how to work on this car. People would sit on the guardrail with their coolers, and watch the cars go by. And, and there would be so many of them on the starting line, you'd start the car, you could not see the racetrack. And as you rolled forward, it was just like a wave that would part and you'd do the burnout. And you'd back up and they'd close up again and then just touch the car as you went forward. You know, I, I had a guy, you know, reach in one time, had a joint. Hey, you want a hip before you go? 